Welcome to Third Wheelin', a podcast where three friends <laughs> sit around a table and talk about random shit. Um, do not go off card. Do not go <laughs> off card. Do not do it. We're doing it live. Anyway, uh, I'm Kenz. And I'm Caitlin. And I'm Alec. And today, instead of bringing you a fun... Well, it's just still a fun topic. I mean, I think it's a fun topic. It's interesting, yeah. uh, which makes it fun. Yeah, but it's, it's more mm-hmm. of a serious topic than weird laws around America. Um, we're going to be doing, hopefully this becomes a series where we talk about unsolved mysteries. Yeah. So, Caitlin and I have done some research. I have some, a little bit more in-depth research because I spent like two days Jesus. writing down what I was going to say. <laughs> so <laughs> Stay on card. But Caitlin is, <laughs> Caitlin is uh, familiar with the material as well. So Because of Netflix. Because of Netflix, exactly. <laughs> you know, because when you binge, binge watch uh, Forensic Files and stuff, you get, you know, yes. interested in this kind of stuff. Fun mm-hmm. stuff. Anyway. What kind of stuff? What kind of stuff? Yeah. Serial killers, mostly. There, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> no one said it yet. <laughs> Wanted to see more natural, though. It just flows. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the, this week has been pretty crazy. It's like, what, like the second week of classes? Full week of classes. Mm-hmm. First full week of classes, so. Oh, hell yeah. We're feeling, feeling pretty good, but very tired. Still have a lot of homework. <laughs> yep. So we're chugging along. We are keeping to our schedule, bringing you guys fresh hot memes. Um, so when, when do they get uploaded? Alec? Every Sunday. Every Sunday. <laughs> so, what you tell me you don't know? Are you subscribed, kids? I am subscribed to this. I just I just don't keep track with you know that kind of stuff on YouTube. I usually like just go down into a hole, like immediately down into the weirdest parts. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like I don't start by looking up oh how how to make like egg pancakes. You just immediately get to the point where it's like. Dank, hot memes, fresh from the oven sort of a thing. <laughs> Search, 18th page, click the third link. It's mostly just, like, um, videos of people making, like, small dioramas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are pretty dank. My favorite, pretty awesome. My favorite rabbit hole recently has been going and watching people kill wasp nests. Oh, just yeah, that's huge super wasps. fun, Ooh, too. You need like, a... On tin roofs with, like, just flaming them out. Like, oh. I've yeah. seen did, we, did you tell Ken's about the wasp that we found this weekend? You found a wasp. Where did you find a wasp? Oh, oh yeah, no, it was in the, it was in our bathroom. We left the window open overnight and it somehow got into our bathroom. So I was sitting there taking a poop, <laughs> as you do. He comes out screaming. And it's one of those things like I hear like Buff. pants around the ankles, just like <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, no, it's one of those things like doesn't even wipe, just leaves the bathroom. <laughs> no, I wiped. You gotta wipe. You gotta stay clean first. I'd rather get okay. stung than leave with a dirty, dirty behind. But no, you sit there and you behind. hear it before you see it generally because they have them big wings. It's a fat wasp. Big fat paper wasp. Okay, it's so it's not, it really it's was like, not that bad. It was just sitting on the mirror cleaning itself. It it's was fine. staring Wasps at me. Are never fine. I was <laughs> dropping methane gas. I sprayed it with my hairspray. I got die. angry. No, I just got angry. <laughs> Hairs- just got angry. <laughs> hairspray freezes its wings so it couldn't fly. We then drowned it in soap water. I dumped out an entire a half a bottle of Windex. I'm not going to admit to entire. So bottle. it wasn't a so it was a paper wasp. But it's not like the wasps on campus, like mud daubers. Or no, 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 no. It was just, okay. It was yeah. an actual wasp. Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad you killed it because wasps wasp. are assholes. We have a wasp mm-hmm. trap now in the bathroom. We put soap, soapy water with sugar in it, and you cut a bottle in half and you flip the top upside down, shove it in and stuff. So if we get a wasp in there, it'll go in the water and die. You know. Like, you ever have fruit fly problems or, like, gnat problems, and they have, like, those cool, like, kitchen hack things for yeah. how to get rid of them? I used to have them, but not this place. Yeah, I know, yeah. Like, I we don't have them either. They were kind of a thing in Chancellor's where it was, like, they were there, and it was mm-hmm. like, oh, you need dish soap, uh, rotting fruit, and, like, vinegar or something. It's like, well, I don't have two of those fucking ingredients, so I guess I'm just going to live with it. <laughs> <laughs> I was blaming the keep- bio labs on all those fruit flies just escaping from the labs. Oh, God. Okay. I had heartfelt problems when I had to kill my fruit flies. Do not tell me to kill more fruit flies. You know what that reminds me of? Africanized honeybees. I'm just thinking of Africanized fruit flies. (laughs) The fruit won't even see it coming. They're just so angry and on steroids. Just just like like... punching the fruit. (laughs) Why are you bruising all my fruit? (laughs) Oh my god. Okay, back to the topic at hand. (laughs) Smooth. Now that we talked about Africanized fruit flies and wasps and, and, bruise and almost dying, so. <laughs> um, today the mystery, the unsolved mystery, is uh, the murder 
mm-hmm. the murder, murder of Cora Crippen by her husband, Doctor Holly Harvey Crippen. Yes. Yes. Holly Harvey Crippen. Beautiful name. Yes. He's a. He's a. He looks like a real. I don't even know. Uh, he looks like he belongs in his time. He does. Yes. He's <laughs> time period. Not the best looker. Okay. Anyway, so little bit of backstory. Crippen was born in Coldwater, Michigan to a merchant and his wife. Um, He went to school for uh, homeopathic medicine, also known as patent medicines at the time. So quack medicines, basically, um, which caught on, like, were very big in the United States at the time, obviously, like snake oil remedies and all that good stuff. And um, his first wife died. Of a stroke. Why are you and laughing? I don't. I'm off for <laughs> laughing. I'm sorry. It was like I, I explained a lot about homeopathic medicines for some reason. It was like, okay, why did I need to do that? Anyway, so his first wife died of a stroke in 1892, um, and he gave like their two-year-old son to his parents to take care of, which I thought oh, was really what? weird. My wife yeah. died. Have my child. I don't want it. So you anymore. just wanted a fresh start. I guess so, but I mean, like, why would you not take your? I don't even know. That just seemed kind of like a weird That's, thing to me. Yeah. Anyway. Do you know how hard it is to two, go out and find another woman when you have to bring this two-year-old child with you everywhere? But what? But most women like children. I don't know. Oh, fair yeah. enough. Uh, yeah. Different times. Different, different, different time, time. period. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, so in 1894, two years later, um, Crippen married his second wife named Cora Turner, uh, a music hall singer. Um, how that happened is not known, like how they met. I yeah. mean, I have no idea. It was probably, you know, um, a perfect storm of, you know, like, I mean, he was a successful doctor. She mm-hmm. was a beautiful music hall singer, you know, it was like a marriage of... Wasn't she not really good at singing? Yeah, she wasn't very good at singing, <laughs> but still, like, you know, beautiful still, music hall singer. I guess This so. guy who wasn't really a looker, I don't know, but he had a lot of money. They just happened to work. <laughs> yeah, happened to work, but not really at the same time. Anyway, um, so... Crippen began working for Dr. Munyon's, a patent medicine company um, that really deserves an episode of its own because there was a lot of stuff with fraud, placebos, very interesting stuff about oh. all of that, like that uh, patent medicine company. Um, and subsequently, he moved to England with his co- with uh, his wife, Cora, soon after oh. um, to work over there, I'm assuming, for Dr. Munyon's. So, in 1899 says here, he was fired from Dr. Munyon's for spending too much time working on his wife's, like, working as his, uh, Cora's stage manager, basically. Oh, really? Oh. So, she was a shit singer, and he got fired for it, basically, because he was oh, her manager. Oh, no. <laughs> what a great time. I could see how this slowly okay. goes downhill right, now. <laughs> right, right. So, like, they're very, they're not very happy. I mean, he was fired, you know, he was a successful doctor, and now he's working at a institution for the deaf. Basically, okay. which isn't very, you know, um, well paid at all, even mm-hmm. though it's times and things. So, and that's where he met Ethel Leneve, which was a young typist there. Yep, a hotter chick. Younger. She was, okay, so More when Cora and singer. Holly married, she was 12 years younger than him. So oh. when he met uh, Ethel, she was about 20 years younger than him. Ooh, a so baby. ripe age. Yes, exactly. <laughs> nice soft skin. Ooh. Very soft. <laughs> Ooh. Speaking oh, of God. skin, oh, excuse me. Uh, okay. Oh, yep. We'll so there. around the same time, um, at their house, he'll drop Crescent in um, London, I believe it was, yes. Um, Cora and Holly started taking lodgers at their home to help, like, pay for rent and things, because obviously Holly didn't have, you know, the best job anymore. Yes, yeah, so And to make Cora money. was still sucked at singing, so... <laughs> I want to know how that goes when she's practicing at home and the lodger's like, I just really want to go to bed and I can't help but hear your wife all night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't really... I have no idea. Um, but apparently, um, Cora started having an affair with one of those lodgers. Ooh. And cuckolded Dr. Crippen. Oh. So fun times there. That is definitely, that adds, that adds to things. Yeah, right? <laughs> Boom. Like, Stirring the pot now. Yeah, very, very unhappy marriage. A lot of drama happening. And then, so in retaliation to that, uh, Holly started having an affair with Ethel in 1908. Okay. Fun times. So, so was he like, oh, well, since you're having an affair, I'm just going to exactly, as well. Exactly. So, and so it's fuck, okay. Fuck Everyone marriage, was in the know. 
So, like, everyone knew everyone was cheating on each other? I'm assuming so. I mean, it seems oh, like Cora man. and Holly were very unhappy, and they both knew that and all that stuff. Like, they both, like, decided, like, hey, we're going to be married anyways. Like, let's just both... I'm sure like, I'm sure they both wanted out, you know? Okay. I really but hope... In that they, time, it was very hard. Yeah. I just really hope they both act really surprised. Wait, you were cheating on me? <laughs> <laughs> the hell? That doesn't make it right at all. <laughs> well, listen to this. 19, uh, uh, excuse me, 1910 is when shit got really real, okay? So after a party at their home on January 31st, Cora just up and disappeared. Randomly. Cool. So <laughs> Wow, problem solved. Um, yeah. Crippen claimed to her friends Already that she returned to, to the United States and later added she died of tuberculosis and was cremated there in California. Wow. So she returned there to see family, he said, and then mm-hmm. she got sick, you know. Yeah. So he was writing letters to her friends telling them this. Um, so, yeah. Did In he the have meantime, any kids though, he sent to his parents again? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look like it, no. All right. Anyway. So in check. the meantime, while all of this was happening, Ethel moved into the home oh, um, and no. began wearing Cora's clothes. Oh, and her my jewelry. God. <laughs> wow. That's not suspicious at all. Exactly, exactly. Um, The police were informed of this, like Cora's disappearance and stuff, by her friend um, and renowned strong woman Kate Williams, also known as Vulcana. Ooh. Yes. Vulcana. She deserves her own episode as well. There's actually an episode on her from the Stuff You Missed in History class. Um, Highly recommend. Um, so they didn't, the police didn't really take it seriously. They were like, yeah, we get, you know, reports of people missing all the time. Like, she probably was just unhappy and left. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, they're still proud. They're still reeling from, like, the Jack the Ripper stuff and all that, even though that happened, um, quite a few years before, but still, you know. It's It's nothing new. Mm -hmm. It's nothing new. Yeah, exactly. Like, it happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah, people disappearing, it's nothing new, especially in a big city. Um, so they didn't take it seriously until um, a mutual friend of the Scotland Yard superintendent um, requested something be done. And not surprisingly, though, nothing was ever found when police searched the house. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know. Like, yeah. If he, if he did kill his wife, like, he probably disposed of the body in a place where they wouldn't find it. Yeah. Anyway. So, Crippen was also interviewed by Walter Dew. Um, who, pr- who was previously involved, albeit minimally, um, with the Jack the Ripper case, um, but made a number of claims otherwise about it, you know, about, like, knowing the victims and stuff. So Walter Dew was an inspector at Scotland Yard, very famous guy, mm-hmm. you know, has a, I think he wrote maybe a couple books, plus his memoir about the whole thing. Um, so, uh, da-da. he was what you would expect of, like, a hard-nosed cop, you know, and received quite a few recommendations for other cases that he was on. So he was a very well-respected man. Um, during the interview, Crippen uh, admitted to his lie that Cora died, stating that Cora had actually left him for another man and moved to the United States with him. Which, I mean, kind of makes sense, you know, because she was having an affair with another mm-hmm. guy, so... Yeah, it would make sense. And, yeah. like... Even back then, you know, your wife leaving you, that's still a hard topic to discuss. So, I mean, the story kind of makes sense. like a sin. Yeah, exactly. Like, kind of makes sense for, you know, him to lie about it to their friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. Because he doesn't want to seem like, uh, you know, that kind of person. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to be that person. (laughs) Um, So, do you search the house himself as well? And was satisfied with the story afterwards, after finding nothing himself? Um... So, this I just imagine him like just showing up, like, like I am the top dog police honcho man of this town. Yeah, I don't believe in anyone else's work. I'm gonna put my nose to the floorboard and just proceeds to go around sniffing everything. <laughs> Goes into like her underwear drawer where that other lady's like sniffing, just picks them up, smells them, like oh, then, like I sit and like Crippen's sitting there watching, I'm like what the hell's wrong with this dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know the story checks out. I smell another man on these, I think. <laughs> or is oh that your clone? Lord. Here, you smell him. Oh. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Anyway, um, so Crippen and Ethel didn't know that Dew was satisfied with the story. Yeah. So they just up and left. They basically, they ran to Brussels Ooh. before boarding the SS Montrose for Canada. Oh. So. So that doesn't look good. It doesn't look all. good at all. <laughs> they made a hasty departure. And um, so after that, Scotland Yard... Um, canvassed the house three more times and on the fourth time 
and final search, they found the torso of a human body buried under the floor of the cellar. Oh my god. Oh wow. Yes. I imagine that would have put off the smell. Exactly. But they searched the house like five times. Yeah, so why would they all of a sudden find it now? Exactly. I I think it'd be I think they're just getting back to like the station every time just thinking themselves, crap. Did we check the attic? All right, we'll go back and check the attic. We'll go through, search the entire house again. Get back to the yard. All right, what did we? What were we supposed to check? The attic. Did we check the attic? Fuck. They search <laughs> one room at a time for yes, each exactly. search. <laughs> I mean, you know, based on like what happened with the Jack the Ripper stuff, you I mean it's not very surprising. They aren't really that the cops weren't doing coordinated very good. at exactly. all. They are all doing their own thing. Exactly. Yeah. They're all, all right. Batman. So, after they found the human body. Um, pathologist Bernard Spilsbury found traces of the drug um, scopolamine, yes, aka hyacine. Scoliosis? No. Okay. <laughs> hyacine. Shit, back um, a medicine used to treat motion sickness, post-surgery vomiting, and sometimes used to decrease saliva. Sal- uh, excuse me, saliva pre-op. Historically, though, it was used to help women giving birth get through the pain in conjunction with morphine um, by pulling, like, putting them in a relaxed state. Um, if Crippen did use hyacine, which the, uh, the prosecution said that he did to um, either pacify his wife or poison her, mm-hmm. it would be the only case on record where that uh, drug was used to murder someone. Yeah, because oh. usually uh, when you use this drug to murder someone or whatever... Um, it's either like arsenic, cyanide, yeah. or stuff like that. So, And also, like, I read that... Um, when you do that, they try the murderer tries to like make it look like there's a sickness yeah, or like, or like an accident, accident. Or something. And, yeah. So they're not like actually like dismembering and trying to hide body parts everywhere. Yes, That's exactly. Really common. And then the side effects of um, hyacine like overdose are very interesting. You can either have somebody that's very like very pacified, almost passed out. In other cases, it can make them go like have a panic attack mm-hmm. or um, like severe mood swings, stuff like that. Even have seizures. So like dying isn't really yeah exactly. A thing. <laughs> so it would be either like a very good way of like killing someone or a very bad way. So, so it's like rolling the dice on whether or not the neighbors would hear this. Exactly, and there were reports that neighbors heard something coming from the home that night, but it could just could have been her singing. So. Exactly. I mean, I mean, yeah, <laughs> like a dying dog. No. Okay. Jesus, no. have you heard her? <laughs> I really don't want she's to. She's majestic goat. I can assume what she sounds like. I don't yeah, exactly. know. Exactly. So, if you're trying to murder someone, to me, it just doesn't seem like why would you risk rolling the dice that much when literally you can go out and buy arsenic rat poisoning from like a local grocer. And especially he knows medicine. Yeah. Like he knows how it works. So yeah. why would? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Someone well, I mean, he, he was when... a homeopathic doctor, so I mean, he really didn't know. <laughs> That much about medicine. But he knew the basics, at yeah, least. exactly. Yeah. And it was argued that his knowledge as a doctor made it even more probable that he would use hyacinth for some reason. The prosecution, mm. the whole, like, court trial was very stupid and I, stuff, so. I, I agree with them there. I feel like if you're a doctor in that time period, you got a little bit of a high and mighty mindset. So those things like, all the low murderers use arsenic. I'm a doctor. I'm going to use Myocene. Hyacinth. Hyacinth. I'm sorry. Mycene. Mycene. Myspace. He's, <laughs> he's Social <on>. suicide. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I leaked my nudes again. <laughs> oh, I wonder how you would leak your nudes in like the early 19th century. <sighs> I, I think you have to, be, to try really hard to accidentally. I meant yeah. to staple up my lost dog poster, but it was accidentally my nude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, so the corpse was identified by a piece of, like, skin from the ad- abdomen mm-hmm. um, that had a scar that Cora was known to have from some kind of surgery. Probably, like, having her append- appendix no taken out or some bullshit. I don't oh, know. God. Um, but the head, the limbs, and the skeleton were never found. So this is literally a fucking hunk of meat why would you just in leave- a fucking cellar. <sighs> yeah, like, why just, would you just oops, leave that? Torso. <laughs> I mean, I guess it could be argued, like, okay, you know, take away the small parts first. You know, easier mm-hmm. to transport, easier to hide, and then maybe he just, I don't even know. He, like, I'm, he I'm trying to play devil's advocate, too, for this, because, you know, it, it's it's very weird, like, the inconsistencies, like, yeah, it's just a hunk of meat in a cellar, but yet they also, like, ran away. Yeah. You know, so it's weird, very weird. 
Um, okay, so meanwhile, Crippen and Ethel, who was dressed as a boy, <laughs> yeah, were recognized by the ship's captain, who uh, noticed, you know, their very strange behavior and stuff. Um, yeah, so he quickly told his telegraph operator to send a message over to Scotland Yard. Before... How did they get that message so fast? That's interesting. It's like... telegraph, so like, oh, it's okay. like Morse code, yeah. But still, I mean. Yeah, I know, I know. It's, it's early 1900s. Shit's weird. Anyway, so uh, the ship's captain ordered the telegraph operator to send a message over to Scotland Yard before the ship's transmitter, transmitter excuse me, um, was out of range. Um, so, some fun things. If Crippen had traveled third class, he would have been fine. But he didn't. <laughs> he should have. I know. It's... If you're trying to hide, why you... the fuck would you be? <laughs> right. Like... You don't want to have he's any in... more attention on you. Yeah, you don't want you. people to recognize you. So he's in... What's the difference between first class and third class? I mean, come on. Uh, third wow. class is for the poor people. Oh, is that where you get to sit in the bottom of the deck with all the sand? Yes, and you might die. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that might be why. There's much more of them. Fun. It's more of a crowd. Yeah, so, you like, like, you can easily down there and, yeah, hide. And, like, nobody would probably recognize them. Nobody cares, Exactly. Nobody, nobody would care <laughs> about the third class people, but, of course, you know, high and mighty doctor doesn't want to travel third class. <laughs> He's too good for that. Too good to travel third class. He'll get all his highest scene taken. He needs that crap. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking so. F- oh no, it's here. fine. I, I was just thinking, like, we should probably do like something on like old surgery methods, on how like that was probably the most like the most invasive surgery they used to do back in the days, like appendix removal, because people go into shock from all the pain and they wouldn't be able to stop the bleeding. So doctors were actually ranked on how good they were way back in the day on how fast they could get the surgery done. Yep. Nice. But they still had ways of, uh... I mean, getting people them drunk. anesthesia. Yeah. Ether. Mm-hmm. Uh, morphine. I mean, especially with the night in the early 1900s, they definitely would have had... Yeah, they definitely would have had that. They even had it in, uh, the Civil War, but there was just so few, like, resources that mm-hmm. it wasn't used often. I'm talking about Greeks, where they do surgery in the Colosseum. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that was still happening. And they, the they Colosseum. Still, they still had surgery. Well, fights, like, come, going on around Come us. view the doctor as he fixes this man's leg. <laughs> Ooh, he fixed it so good, the man doesn't even know a leg anymore. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Okay, so. Perform the right good amputation. Um... All right, so he would have been fine if he would have traveled for uh, third class, but of course he didn't. Um, and if he just took a ship to America, it would take, like, an extradition. Like, you know, the government of the uh, United Kingdom would have to tell the U.S. to bring this man, you know, back. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, back then... Nobody would. Nobody would fucking do that. They'd so. be like, yeah, sure, throw it in the trash. <laughs> Forget about it. Exactly. So it's like... It could have been done a lot better. I mean, yeah, there's not a lot of foresight. I mean, maybe he did want to get caught. I don't know. Or maybe he didn't think that he was going to get caught. Yeah, he was probably really hazy. I mean, just trying to get out of there. Exactly. He has the young Ethel Maneve on mm -hmm. his arm. He had like a 15% off coupon for the Canada boat. (laughs) True. (laughs) Cheaper tickets. Yeah. Use uh, Travelocity. <laughs> and it doesn't, uh, it's not good if you bring a female passenger. That's just why Ethel was dressed as a boy. So. <laughs> Cheaper tickets. Cheaper tickets. Okay. They had that stuff back then, I think. Anyway, so here's what the telegram said to the British authorities. Have strong su- suspicions that Crippen London cellar murderer and a couplet <laughs> are among saloon <laughs> passengers. <laughs> Mustache taken off, growing beard, accomplice dressed as a boy. Manner and build, undoubtedly a girl. So that was the actual message. She didn't even dress up good enough. God damn it. She needs more layers. She should have uh, taped down her boobs. That's, uh, I mean. Cut your damn hair. Mm -hmm. Lay Miz that crap. (laughs) And (laughs) Or Mulan. Mulan it. Ooh, Mulan it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, all of this was front page news and stuff. It inspired, you know, a couple poems and things like that. Mm -hmm. Very funny. Like, the nation was gripped by this whole thing. Even, I think, yeah, probably just the UK, but I mean, I'm sure the US as well were probably covering it, maybe as well. Because they actually so, caught a murderer. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, like, unlike the Jack oh the Ripper, my God. They, yeah. will, they actually want to. Yeah, they actually yeah. want to catch him. So, uh, Inspector Dew 
boarded a faster ship and was waiting for Crippen and Leneve in Canada. He boarded their ship dressed as a captain, um, you know, and Ooh, Dr. Crippen and Ethel dressed as a boy. I don't know what the fuck her Elias was. Anyway, they were invited, you know, to meet them. And so dude took off his hat and he's like, Dr. Crippen, do you know who I am? <laughs> oh, God. And then Dr. Crippen yes. just held out his arms and was like, thank God it's over. <laughs> Oh my god. The worst boat ride ever. <laughs> I wish there was like man. some fists swinging around or something. I know, like some not kind like... of fight. No. No. No, he's too much of a gent. This isn't CSI <laughs> Miami. There isn't going to be any fights. I feel as though that's been a little bit exaggerated. Like the cop is just trying to make himself, ah, I'm so intimidating that I just show my face and they're like, oh, I've been caught. You done did me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... They were returned to stand trial. Happened in November. It was very quick. Only a couple days. I think Ethel's only took one day. Yeah, she got pretty fast. It was very, like, you know, open and shut case. Um, But there are various weird inconsistencies like we already talked about. Um, So, Spilsbury or any other, like, pathologists, like, in the case, like, even, like, the defendants, you know, of Mm -hmm. Dr. Crippen, um, they could not identify if the body was male or female. Yeah, I thought that was just interesting, a hunk too. of meat, though. But yeah. Spilsbury was able to find levels of hyacin in the body, which okay. is something that you just don't really look for. Usually you're looking for things like cyanide, arsenic. Like, hyacin is a very unlikely murder. Um, so he, like... Yeah, we're going in- so, going into the investigation, he was specifically already looking for that? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, so, like, it's been speculated huh. that he was probably told what to look for. Yeah, like, as if sure it was, homes. like, planted evidence, almost. Exactly, okay. right? Oh, that's probably Keep what Crippen did. Mm-hmm. He just came in and told him, hey, buddy, come catch me. So, the piece <laughs> of skin with the scar as well um, was also quite strange, like, that whole thing. The defense asserted that it was just a folded, like, folded piece of tissue, like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, skin folds, uh, because it had spacious glands and hair follicles growing out of it, which, as most people know, even, like, laymen know, that scars don't grow hair. No. So, or have sweat glands. So, yeah, Yeah. so so not a scar. (laughs) But the jury and the judge were too convinced that Crippen had committed the crime, so even though the defense had, like, put forth these, like, great assertions that there was no way that Dr. Crippen had murdered his wife because of this evidence. They still convicted him, and he was hung. Of course, because they just wanted to close the case. Exactly. um, Some other evidence I found was, um, so there was a letter from Cora that Mm -hmm. they found um, to Crippen stating that she wouldn't save him from execution. Yep. And I guess, you know, that was deemed as a hoax. Yeah, because there's a lot of people that were sending in letters, mm -hmm. just like with the Jack the Ripper case, too. People just sending in letters to, you know, get a rise out of, um, Mm -hmm. like, the government officials and things. And and I guess nobody actually ever, like, really looked into it or compared. Yeah, the defense had no no access to this. The cops received the letter, um, and then it was just pushed aside. They were like, well, we already got him. He's already in jail. Fuck it. Yep. Like, he totally did it. And um, another thing as well, so in 2007, they did DNA testing on the piece of skin and found that it was, or it had male DNA. Yeah. Yeah, they compared it to um, Cora's um, now relatives, Mm -hmm. and it did not match any other DNA whatsoever. They're done. And plus, it's male. (laughs) Yeah, and um, some people, it's still very controversial about all that. Some people think that... You know, the pathologist at the time might have, you know, gotten his DNA on the slide, which is very unlikely, but could maybe happen. It's still probable, even though it's very unlikely. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. Mm, so DNA, like the understanding of it was not what it is today exactly, at all. Exactly, exactly. And yeah. even, I think, so 10 years later, now they can even test to see, like, what ethnicity this DNA belong, like, this person um, was and all that kind of stuff. So that's in, that would be interesting to know. Um, but I have no idea. And there was also another thing as well. Um, records that Cora might have been staying in New York with someone. Um, yeah. Like lodging with someone in like a hotel. Um, they believe the person was her sister and stuff like that. Ooh. So there's a possibility that she might... She probably left. Yeah, honestly. like his story yeah. was true. Yeah, so she probably left, was lodging with her sister in New York before moving someplace else, 
I believe it was Chicago. Mm -hmm. Um, But then again, that letter was a hoax, so we don't know for sure. But the man that she was supposedly having an affair with, Bruce Miller, was brought to trial and by the defense, and he stated that, yes, you know, I've seen Cora, like, we're in a relationship, all that, you know, good stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But still, uh, the uh, prosecution did not listen. <laughs> let him hang! <laughs> well, if he did, like, Crippen happened to murder someone, yeah. maybe if he did, it was one of Cora's lovers yeah. that she had. Oh. That's another um, theory as well. Or, you know, planted evidence again, like, Exactly, because... With the body, there was a pajama top that was found that linked Crippen to the case as well because it supposedly matched um, some bottoms that he had in his dresser. Um, But, so that's very, that's damning evidence and they say, like, that's the evidence that basically, you know... Got him. Got him, yeah. Okay. Got him a death sentence. Wow. Um, And, of course, the skin with the scar, but um, I think now it's basically, like, we know now that it's, you know... Completely false. Yeah, I think it's, it's funny that of flesh you keep in just your a head. very yeah, it's very few evidence that you know convicted him of this murder, and you have like all these other things, you know. Yeah, I think like now like it's, that proved it wrong, and everyone's like, nope, I want to prosecute someone, and exactly, it. exactly, and then. Uh, so some people believe it's a complete con- like police conspiracy, you mm-hmm. know, noble cause corruption. Like maybe do believe that Crippen was actually guilty and just needed evidence to, like, convict him. Yeah. So you know, like, I mean, it's not to say that they probably put that body down there. We don't know where that came from. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, it's just a hunk of flesh. So who knows where that was from? But if- the, but the pajama top might have been planted. Yeah. Well, if you know, I think about if it is a. Uh, police conspiracy, you know, with the whole Jack the Ripper not finding anyone. Maybe it was just a way, if it was true, of them restoring faith to the public. Like, yeah. they can trust these people to catch the bad guy. Exactly. Yeah. So they're like, I don't care who I get, as long as we can have the public trust us again. So. Exactly. I mean, there was a lot of media scrutiny, a lot of government scrutiny, you know, going on. And then after this trial was over, do left Scotland Yard. He retired. Oh. So that definitely says something okay. as well. Okay, yeah, definitely. You know, because, um, yeah. So a bunch of other theories that were put forth was that Crippen might have been performing illegal abortions, which could explain why there was something buried in his cellar. Mm-hmm. It either maybe could have been the body of a, you know, aborted fetus, or maybe an abortion went wrong and he had to hide the body. Could have been. Or maybe oh. somebody found out about an abortion happening and tried to, like, frame him. And so he murdered him. And had him murdered. So, I mean, it's very, like, it's very strange. Crippen also asserted that, you know, it could have been from the previous tenants because it was a rented home. Yeah. Um, but the pajama top being there made the time frame very, uh, you know, like, the time frame very close to when Cora was murdered. So he yeah. stated they only lived in the home... Uh, from 1905 to 1910, before he like he was arrested. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know what to make of it. So we can Honestly. at least conclude that we know it's not Cora's body, yes. but it's definitely a, it's someone's. Body. It's someone's. Okay. Oh wow. So yeah. Um. I just wonder Crippen, where you find a hunk of flesh back in the day, unless you made it yourself. I mean, <laughs> well, I mean, there's plenty of just random bodies that pop yeah, up everywhere from yeah. murders. Because I mean, oh Jesus, like. I mean, honestly. It's a big place, today. and, I mean, they had a lot of problems back then, too. Exactly. I just think it's so interesting that, like, there's no limbs that were found, no head, no skeleton even. Yeah. There's just this weird hunk of Meat. flesh in this person's cellar. It's got to be placed there. I just, I, I just, know. I don't know. I don't get it either. <laughs> I don't get it either. And there was it other assertions sense. that um, someone saw Cora moving a bunch of, uh, what, is, what are they called? Body bags? No, not body bags. It's like, because that's kind of a thing you tell someone uh, else about. Not crates, but. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, boxes. Not boxes. God dang it. Uh, trunks. Trunks, yeah. Okay. Tr- large trunks from her home, trying to get a carriageman to, like, um, you know, help her with them so mm-hmm. that she could leave, you know? Oh. So a large amount of trunks leaving a home, woman matching Cora's description. I mean, it makes sense. She's it makes leaving. Sense that she left, right? <laughs> so I don't really know. I mean, it's I'd still, leave too if I was it's leaving. still such a strange case, but I think we can say for certain that Dr. Crippen did not murder his wife, at yeah. least in my opinion. I agree. and was executed for a murder that he did not commit. Exactly. Um, 
There's this uh, quote that I found from a letter that Crippen wrote to Ethel before mm-hmm. his execution. And it says, uh, face to face with God, I believe that facts will be bo- be forthcoming to prove my innocence. Yes. So I think that's pretty interesting, um, knowing what we know now. Exactly right. It's very chilling. Like about like hundred a year, hundred years later. Yeah, exactly. And I believe um, Crippen's family in Michigan they are still trying to get his body brought over for a proper burial in the United States, mm-hmm. but it has not happened yet because government um, has deemed like the uh, United Kingdom's government has said that. Um, the relatives that are still alive on um, uh, Dr. Crippen, like in Dr. Crippen's family, don't have cause because they're not um, related close enough to Polly, oh. which is very interesting to me. Yeah. Because, like, mm-hmm. the man was framed. <laughs> right. So it's like, okay. Yeah, at least you can just bring him back and be buried yeah, with exactly. family. Exactly. But, I mean, government money, time, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, so viewers out there you can be the judge yeah. all we know is that media scrutiny can make or break a case i believe mm-hmm. and we know for certain that dr crippen uh, did not murder his wife maybe he murdered somebody else maybe cora murdered somebody and framed her husband hell exactly. maybe it was ethel in the kitchen with the candlestick i don't know <laughs> <laughs> or investigators who knows or investigators planning evidence who knows we've seen police corruption um, quite frequently in this day and age, especially the 1900s making a murder yeah. sort of Netflix series. Oh god! Yeah. Can you imagine that? Probably be a very good show. Anyway, so all of these sources, Wikipedia, obviously, mm-hmm. even though that's not the greatest source out there, but it does have a lot of great information on it about Dr. Crippen, about the murder, all that good stuff. If you guys want to watch um, shows about this, there is um, an episode on Secrets of the Dead about Dr. Crippen called Executed in Error. It's on YouTube. Um, and there's also Murder Maps on Netflix. Mm, I love it. I which is where we first show. heard about Dr. Crippen. And mm-hmm. yeah, and we decided to do an episode on it. So thank you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us some weird unsolved mysteries that you want us to cover. All that good stuff. Even weird unsolved murders that are murders, mysteries, all that kind of stuff you that you find interesting. Or, or even your theory on what we just yeah, talked about. Yeah, even your theory about what happened. Because we'd love to hear it. Yes, yeah. please. All right. All right. That's a- <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> That's it from us at Third Wheelin'. Love your lamp. Shoot the gap. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye.